ban phase on 715 here. Zach obviously received some pretty big yeah. nerfs. Teams have been letting him through. And then it's a question of whether you even want to pick him. Yesterday was a little peculiar because towards the end of 714, we were seeing Maokai first picked almost whenever available. But there were times where Maokai fell through even the second phase of bans. So a lot that these teams are going to have to kind of decide on their own within their own scrim blocks what is still OP and worthy of a red side ban for TSM. Yep. Clearly they're saying they think Zach is still in that point, so they ban that. Final ban from TSM. The thresh away from Biofrost as well, so they get one hit just about everywhere across the map. Yeah, I feel like it's having that flex. I feel like Thresh dropped in priority a little bit uh, due to the bug fix on his flay, which was adding a slight amount of additional CC yeah. and making it easier to hook directly after your flay. With that being said, so you're saying still want to Biofrost best champion? No, I'm just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're just easy as free hook, but now he's definitely harder to right. get that set. Absolutely. So it's going to be Callista that gets taken out. Neither Thresh or Callista get through this time. Maokai picked up by Phoenix. One here for Mike Young in the jungle, most likely. We'll see what TSM answers with another one, too. Yeah, so from a first pick perspective, this is really similar to 714. There were no direct changes to Maokai between that patch and 715, so I'm not surprised to see it locked in right away for Phoenix. One, huge tank, flex pick, top lane or jungle, so easy value up there. And I'm a little surprised that TSM didn't try and trade that for Callista, because that's what I often see done. But they're the ones who ban Callista, and then they get two strong, but I wouldn't say first pick yep. worthy champions in return. Tristana has really been opening up games and turrets once a team can get a hold. TSM usually has that mid-game swing, which would allow them quite a bit, or quite an influx, I should say, of that power and gold. Gragas, Trist are those picks mm -hmm. as we wait on Phoenix One. Yeah, Kog'Maw is another thing we're seeing a lot more of. Uh, we've actually seen Wit's End being rushed as a first item occasionally. And even over in the LPL, and I, I wonder if this will catch on here, uh, you're seeing barrier Kog'Maw's with heal supports who rush Art and Sensor, and then you hit this 15-minute power spike where you just instantly take the bottom lane by storm. But uh, huh. basically just power picks done by Phoenix One so yeah. far and they're saying there's enough supports left on the table that TSM won't be able to ban them out to really cripple that lane. Yep, very good for Pyrian here to get the Talia as well. He was really cycling in the Corky, the Jaces and whatnot when those were still viable, but more viable. So don't forget that Talia means he gets comfort. Nar over on the side for Hanser, the playmaking to come in when he can get to those fights. Yeah, Nar is something that can win lane against Maokai. Mm -hmm but it's also a good blind pick, which is what must be done since Maokai is a flex pick right now. I think TSM has been very safe with their draft so far. Gragas, a solid jungle, Trist, a top tier AD carry for sure, yeah. and Nar, a very good solid top laner that fits in they could be picking on that clad. Yeah, they're almost banking on the fact. Oh. Well, that's interesting because the Jace could go top lane, the Rek'Sai could go right. jungle. So they're trying to kind of get rid of whatever picks they would be worried about uh, if Phoenix One does decide to throw Maokai in two different roles. They don't opt to ban supports uh, against the Kog'Maw because they themselves haven't picked a support. Hmm. And I think Phoenix One will continue to ban out mid laners as that's the mismatch role. Absolutely. So another one taken down. Eriksson still has quite a few on his list that he could play. But those top ones taken out for himself and Syndra, Pass, and Oriana. Pick up here, looking for at least a mid or a support. Yeah, Bjergsen knows he's going up against Italia. So the mid laner is the correct choice here and saving the support for last pick. Still viable. Yeah, he's only played Corky twice this split, mm -hmm. but boy, is it a viable mid laner as far as a damage perspective goes. Pretty solid pick, yeah. once again, for TSM. You keep it nice and safe in the mid lane. Farm behind.
cost as well, though. Uh, Janna, I think one of the most underrated pro supports on the patch. Solo Q knows all about Art and Sensor Janna. But this will be interesting because Phoenix One has brought so many more tools than TSM for starting fights and CCing people. And he switches over to Lulu, who's still an Art and Sensor user, but not quite as uh, point and click as Janna for Shield on Man. But. Yeah, a, a, a low CC overall team composition for TSM. Corky doesn't bring any CC. Uh, Nar needs to be in Mega to have that initiation. And Lulu isn't your Braum type initiator that you could see on the other side. So Phoenix 1, if they get ahead, absolutely have a way to close this game quickly. With the Kled initiation on top of all the CC they can chain, TSM's going to have to have a strong laning phase of this game to prevent that from happening. Yep. Both of the AD carries kind of wanting to charge up here in the beginning. We'll see if Mike Young and Spence Garen can bring a little pressure down towards that bot side. Also on the top, you can see in that Kled. Let's see if they can get the pressure up there with Haunter's Nar as well. We're loading on to the Rift. TSM looking to keep themselves here at the top of the charts. But Phoenix 1 is looking to keep those championship points. Both want this win. Who wants it more? The coaches head off to the back as the players are left to their own device. Here, mechanics and the knowledge here coming into play. Hashtag P1 win, hashtag TSM win as we load onto the rift. Yeah, one more time going over those team compositions. A lot of comfort picks coming through for Phoenix 1. Pyrian's Talia has been his best champion year round. Ziggs, Kled has been what he is known for. But Doublelift has also kicked Tristana as his go-to AD this split. He's got that pick. Got Ramus in the crowd. Many Teemos and many fans ready. CTSM and P1. Duke it out on the rift. Oh, Butterfly Kog'Maw flying around. TSM fans out in force. And even though this may seem yeah. like a freebie game, you have a 12 and 4 team against a 4 and 12 team. Phoenix 1 always plays TSM tough. And Phoenix 1 also has a ton to play for. TSM is playing to secure a playoff buy. They do that with a win. They secure first with two wins this weekend, that they win this one and then beat COG on Sunday. Phoenix 1 needs to finish about eight or above. Yes. Ninth or tenth means they lose their championship points and head to the promotion tournament. Seventh or eighth means they keep their championship points and head on to the regional qualifier, which will happen after the summer finals and still have that chance at Worlds. Get that extra pressure, see if they can really get Mike Young formulated into the team for that situation. He came out so explosive and it did put that light at the end of the tunnel for P1 here, but they are also going to have to work for it all the same. Minions has yeah, and we got to hear Mike Young talk about the meta shift and how he was a very good jungler before the meta shift when he was playing all his comfort. And then he had to adapt his play style to playing Maokai, Sejuani, the tanks that are big right now. And that is really what defines the veteran pro junglers from the new guys. Sven Skarin's been through it all at this point. He's played both versions. Mike Young still needs to prove he can have that same level of impact on things like Maokai. Goes off with a pretty nice leash. We'll track that. Junglers are going to be on opposite sides once they round out their jungle paths. And we begin the laning phase as well. Yeah, so... I'm actually a little interested that neither of these guys started Raptors because that is the most efficient route, especially Maokai. Uh, since he had the pull from the Braum and the Kog'Ma, I still don't like right. that optimization by the Maokai. You can stack three saplings in your Raptor brush, throw a fourth as your first three explode, kill five of the small Raptors, and then go and take red. It's the super leash. You can do it with Maokai, but the bot lane gives just as much investment. He's now not going to be able to hit level four as fast, and I feel like it's just a less efficient route. And it seems like that would be just kind of something that works. It's not something you wouldn't do if you haven't before, right? This is only his second play, but it's just saplings to Raptors and yeah. red. So it seems like it would be pretty pretty easy to do in the beginning. Choice for him, though. Maybe he just feels comfortable starting on that red. He is going to be towards the top side scuttle now. Yeah, there are reasons that even if the other one's more efficient, you would mm -hmm. go for the buff start. Uh, especially against Tilly and Corky. Both those guys are really good at harassing your Raptors. If they just steal one of those small Raptors while you're trying to do a Super Leash, the Super Leash falls apart because okay. you don't hit level two by the time you go to bed. Fury, though, caught out. Hello. Maybe thought he had enough movement speed to get past that wall. Definitely gonna have to blow his flash here. 
Actually got a good shove in. And that holds that for himself. Very low. He's going to have to lose a little pressure in lane. Yeah, really good timing of Sven Skaren's gank right there because Mike Young had just cleared bot to top, so he wasn't going to be near that spot. And he gets a bunch of harass onto Pyrian, which will help Briggs and get lane priority. Mike Young also with a bit of an idea of where Sven Skaren could be. You see top lane going back and forth. Sven quickly actually changing that path, heads towards top side. He may actually be beating up with Mike Young here as he tries to get a ward in. And the junglers start to seek each other out. Oh, nice scar is blue. Yeah, he's gonna spot out Sven Skaren, but likewise, yeah. only someone that is a jungler could have hit that scrying more at the time, <laughs> so Sven Skaren now knows where Mike Young is as well. That's the one, right? It feels good to hit, and then you're like, ah, oh, but they gotta know I hit it. Oh well. The information, only if you can use it faster, is your advantage. Bjergsen is well canceling out that Squire's Bloom on the bottom, so he can figure out if he is safe in that situation. 26 to 29 here on the bot side. A little aggression from Expecial. They switch targets. Heal onto Biofrost. Bio Arcane Barrage falls off, and Arrow is happy to farm. Yeah, really interesting play there by X Special jumping forward to threaten double. Mike Young might flash there. Twisted advance, Bramble smash. The Q actually misses. They don't have the follow up lock up. And it is going to be a walk away here. That flash still just for double lift, but the flash there for X Special. I'm sorry, heal for double lift, flash for X Special. Yeah, I want to say the Mike Young clicked the wrong target with his Twisted Advance. Biofrost is at 200 health. And if you flash Twisted Advance, that guy. You probably kill him with the double flash, but he instead locks up double lift, who has rocket jump. So all that has to happen is he burns heal, and they get out of that one for a two for one summoner spell trade yep. advantage. So a missed execution by Mike Young on that game. Very much so. Sven Skarin continuing this path, made sure he got over to Raptors so he knows that timing. He's gonna go ahead and start stealing these away. He knows Mike Young is just under him, but with the lane push already has Bjergsen in his favor. And he knows Mike Young has no flash, so That's if they true. do catch him here since Fence Karen's at full health, they might even be able to kill him with the damage from Corpy and Gragas. So a safe jungle invade, punishing Mike oh. Young's failed flash game. Leaves it too. Says you have to pick up the scraps. Yeah. Is he going back? They just want more wards. They can play ring around the rosy with him right now had eyes on mike young since he hit that scars bloom and spence garen is working that perfectly it's not even for the kills and ganks it's just so they can have this strong really it sets something up the pressure hasn't hurt anybody too much 52 to 44 as there's a back from Pyrian. may lose a few of this cs and mid as pierce to push up yeah, no big CS lead for the Trist yet, and I think Kogma is going to be happy with that if he can stay at CS parity with the Trist for the majority of the game phase. I think it's going to help a little bit with that, but you know, having the Berserker Screaves now to a BS sort of Trist means that lane could get pretty scary pretty fast. Machine for Bjergsen as well. Might be able to throw out some very fast damage that Pyrian's not expecting if they can come back to lane right away. And I also got to remember Bjergsen has that teleport. This is a double TP team for TSM. They have very quick ways of getting around the map if something happens. That's going to be package, teleport, and monsters teleport. So yeah. almost three ways. And I think we, we might be seeing a lot of action around the bottom lane this game. I mean, that's generally how Kled Talia team compositions work, which is what Phoenix One has, is just a lot of collapsing. The Talia wall and the Kled ultimate are two of the best map traversing abilities in the game. And Kog'Maw is one of the best characters to play around. So the composition speaks for itself as far as what they want to do. It's just a matter of if TSM can stop it from happening so they can scale in their own right. Bit of vision here for P1 to stay safe. Biofrost just working on more HP and health for the lane so they can stay and harass. Yeah. They're going to slight roam down from here and just to get some vision. P1's actually trying to say Sven has too big of an idea of what's going on our side of the jungle. We need to gain control back here. Yeah, and three minutes after that game's bottom lane, you're still seeing the effects of it on the map because those boards that spotted Mike were placed by Sven Skaren's tracker snipe as he was doing the counter jungle. That's... If you're going to go back for an early tracker's knife, if you can use those first two wards in those exact two spots that... Sven Skarin did, one by the red buff, one in the brush right next to the Raptors. Um, it's the best place for them. So Sven Skarin got a great use of his first two wards. They spotted Mike Young even three minutes later. They still know where he's going to be. And now they finally spot him. Really, we got to 
code brush to see how much it's entered and see which of the brushes entered the most in the early game. Obviously, that one in front of red, or you would say behind if you're on the opposing team, is is the place to put the pink ward or for the early ward. Garen coming down. All the wards let him know he'll be there before Mike Young, but the TPs are here too. Peering with a nice cutoff. Double lift off the wall. Bjergsen now with Svenskeren in a bad spot as Hanser comes in. Nature's Grabs is coming in slow, but not quick enough for Peering. He goes down. They lose Svenskeren in the one for one. And who is next is everybody who is very timid about entering that fight. Yeah, 5v5 in the bot lane, eight minutes in. That's just what we talked yeah. about. How that is what Phoenix One's composition wants to do. And I think that Phoenix One should actually be pretty happy about the outcome. Mm -hmm. Because they got both teleports out from TSM. TSM knew it was coming. They pinged the Maokai on the bottom side of the jungle, and then it's still just a one for one, and the kill goes over to Kog'Maw. So I think that's a win for Phoenix One. Yeah, fantastic wall. Didn't really allow TSM to do too much off of it. We'll see it again in a second here. The special hatching that ward. Almost gonna have another ward in a second. Here it is. Yeah, so TSM gets stunned there on Biofrost. He gets pretty low and isn't level 6 yet, which means he has to stay out of the fight. Double if then hops over the wall, and it's a temporary 2 before while Haunter's teleport completes. TSM does pick up First Blood, thanks to the package doing a bunch of damage to Talia, but aside from that, uh, pretty much a wash of a fight. Ooh, Summoner Heal just used by Double if. Yeah, pretty little aggressive trade there. Keeps himself alive. Looks like Special went under the turret for a few shots with the amount of damage he's taken here. Arrow flashed forward as well for that situation. So yeah. quite a bit of action in that bot lane and the replay. Yeah, Bar Frost had gone back to base as well as he snuck into the jungle to place some wards. So they had a window to try and go out and double it. But check out the ward coverage they have now. Yeah. So that not only was that the two Tracker's Knife wards uh, by Sven Skarin, it was two of the Sightstone wards from Biofrost. They want control, and they want to know when those bottom lane ganks are gonna happen. Like the action has stopped just yet. You said the fights would be bot lane. The fuse was lit, and it is still going for both P1 and TSM. It was the fight with the teleport that is extended now into this mountain drake. And the rest of P1 is here. The cooldown enough for Nature's Grasp to come back up, reused, as the cats dive forward. Yeah, Mountain Drake doesn't do very much damage, so Sven Skarin's still pretty healthy. Pyrian's in a bad spot. Oh, very bad spot. I think he realizes that himself. Comes up, goes back down as the second kill in the game for TSM. And now they're trying to decide, can Mike Young get in there for a smite? Not worth it, as the wards for TSM were placed too far ahead of time to get this dragon. Yeah, slow and steady wins it there for TSM, understanding the differences between the Drakes. That was a Cloud Drake. It attacks four times as fast as the Mountain Drake, so Sven Skarin wouldn't have been able to be at full health and jump out of that. We're gonna watch what happened during that replay where they tried to kill Doublet right here. And special moves forward. They really wanted to get this done, so they flashed forward, oh, but just it wore off. fired right oh. before. If that stun procs, Doublet is dead. And here is the dragon fight as it just kept going. Yeah, Makai Ultimate, Sven Skarin says, I want no part of this. <laughs> uh, knows he can hop over the wall. But then Phoenix One can't really commit, and Kyrian gets stuck between TSM. Nice job by Sven to get her on the back. Say, I can get out of this situation if I want. If I get into the situation, my team is there. So a win-win on both sides. You see TSM come out on top there. A little bit of gold ahead and that Mountain Drake to start things, especially with the Tristana here. Mike Young cleaning up the jungle, 65 to 59, as the jungler is staying at a pretty good clip. Sven has been able to get his hands into these fights a little bit more. Yeah, and even though we've been focused so much on the bottom lane, we need to look a little bit at the top lane because Hunter's opened up an 800 gold advantage over Zig. Ooh. Nard can be quite the lane bully as well, looking to dismount him here before turning mini and pressuring the turret. The wallop, one more. Hits him with Glacier. Now, now it's time. Perfect transformation timing, actually. Just when he'd want to disengage. Now he's going to start harassing him at turret. Dodge there. They call Sven up. That's going to be Bjergsen as well. He's slowly roaming without package, but they'll be fine. He has blue buff to keep this fight. Continuous. Bjergsen actually going to still come down towards that second tier. They're going to have quite a bit of damage. Explosive cast back. Flashes. He's going to get it and feel safe to stay. That's when Bjergsen arrives. He has to ult out of the situation. Zig is safe, but Pyrian is not. Number three for Perian coming up, and that's number one for Double Lift.
Kyrian is just not having a good Talia game here. Gets caught in wards while trying to set up a play, and that's the opposite of what Phoenix One wanted. Oh, straight out of Biofrost. They know the summoners have been used over and over in this bot lane, but with three strong, they have the catch potential. Monster with the TP down, just gnawing out. All right, Zig can TP in here as well to make it a numbers advantage for, for P1. But Hunter has all soon. No, it doesn't. No, it. no, locks it in, just throws in. Was looking for a straight wallop off the hop. Ponser goes down. Mike Young, quick kick to the face. Now they're onto it. They're double lift, I'm sorry. A special there to lock him down. And that is a two kill coming in for P1. And they had just dropped Biofrost. Yeah, steadfast in their focus, bottom lane, is Phoenix One. Even though Pyrian died to the duo lane, P1 was not dissuaded from that pressure. TSM just kind of kept throwing bodies at it. Not accounting for Zig's teleport, I think, towards the end of that one, cost TSM big. A lot expended by P1 to grab that. Only Pyrian's flash is up. No, it is not. No summoners up for P1. A Pyrian, death number four coming in. Yeah, this is quickly becoming a nightmare for Pyrian. His team doing work in the bottom lane. Everyone else deathless. Four deaths in the mid lane. Burns his flash and falls yet again. But still anyone's game. He's got to make sure to not tilt as this one continues. Firefrost flashes late. There were just too many people under the turret right there. Shouldn't have been in that spot. The turret should have been given up, but I imagine it was a team call to try and defend because Hanser said he could TP and was mega. But with no Gnar ultimate, Hanser really doesn't have many places to go. Thought Bjergsen was going to come in. I mean, he must have thought he had all. Otherwise, you do not flash in a point-blank range of the opponent like that. Like, that's right. I just yeah. soloed it. Oh, by the way, I used a top lane to harass. Big mistake there by Hanser with the flash forward to the end. 15 minutes in, Pyrian. Teammates on his back. Arrow though, 202, doing exactly what he needs to do. Aperion isn't one that able, is able to provide this damage. The Kogma just may be able to. Bjergsen with the package, possible plays to be made. His teleport is still up. Ponser will take you back to that top side as TSM starts to spread then and try and push the lanes on P1. Yeah, they do have that turret advantage. They've taken the bot lane thanks to the help of Tristan, and they've taken the top lane because Hanser's got a big lead over Zig. If they take the Rift Herald here, they're going to shoot at mid lane oh, and yeah. then try and take control of the map that way. So even if there has been a few missteps by TSM, they still have the game in control, so to speak, and a plan to go forward. They did just see Arrow on the bot side. They're going to be able to take this without the Herald use. Now they get to use it on a second tier turret whenever they want. Herald? That is absolutely huge. Yeah, I actually think it's going to be hard to get good use out of the Rift Herald now. That does, uh, that, that, you do make a good point. Yeah, you got to place it deeper in enemy territory. Although, my favorite use of Rift Herald is when a team uses it as a Drake is coming. Because it's harder for the opponent to defend against it if you're sending everyone to Drake. So now Zig without teleport. If that turn wants to stay alive, Zig's got to be there. But Basically, TSM can now send five people to Drake. A gigantic banner of command at the moment. Yes. True? <laughs> That's exactly what it is, Riff. So yeah, Zig will definitely have to respect that call. TSM now heading down towards Dragon. Five strong. Remember, Zig's teleport is down from the previous engage. If they wait too long, then Zig's going to make it here. Yeah. Zig's already in alt range. Hang on to the turret. He did enough damage that it wouldn't really matter if Rift Herald got to the turret. Infernal goes over to TSM as Nature's Grasp kind of disengages the fight if it were to happen. And kind of just minions lost the top side. Very well played by TSM to run uh, P1 thin there. Yeah, they also got the majority of the turret that Zig abandoned. So overall, a successful map play by TSM right there. Essentially turning a Rift Herald into an Infer yep. Infernal Drake rather than using Rift Herald to take a turret. I think you're seeing in these engages too, uh, is P1's kind of hesitant to say, can we go in, can we not? The nature's graphs aren't absolutely terrifying. It's not a terrifying spell in itself, uh -huh. but it seems to keep being an afterthought here from P1. This is the second mile guy play for Mike Young, so they're not instantly like snap engaging to say, hey, if they go for the dragon, let's take it then. If this turret's gonna down, let's take it then. Yeah, nature's grasp is so slow that it mainly 
needs to be used as a zoning ultimate, yeah. uh, or cast at an angle so that the enemy team has to give something up versus get hit by it. But good point. when used as an initiation from head on, it's almost never going to be effective. Yeah. So too many of those types of uses for Mike Young. And since Phoenix went into that map pressure, they haven't been able to set up the angles for the good ultimates. A lot of that turret gold has also gone into items for double lift here. Sven Skaren's Knight's Vow already purchased. I believe that's on double lift. It could be on Bjergsen. I haven't seen the connection just yet, but you see a glacial shroud for Mike Young as they're still piecing these things together. Just pieces really for P1. As TSM controls the map and denies these outer turrets. Such a big influx of gold early in the game. P1 regaining control of their jungle here, Look. doing it with power in numbers. If special goes back instantly, Polymorph to shut down the Glacial Fisher. He actually never gets it off, which allows TSM to continue the fight. Beautiful job by P1, Turn is turning and focusing. A priority on Sven Skarin. Bjergsen, however, and double it from the backside, firing in is Sven Skarin. I'm sorry, Hauntzer is the meat wall going in, and they're able to take this one down. Three for one overall as TSM just kind of backs out of that fight to return with more damage. Yeah, Arrow not at that super shred point on Kogma yet, so it doesn't yeah. matter that TSM opens up in a tanks in front team fight. And this time, Hanser did have ultimate when he yeah. flashed for Meganar, and it makes a huge difference at the end of the fight. Very quickly played. P1 still making these fights look pretty good. If they could get to that back line, I feel like it'd be a much different story, obviously. But yeah. this choke point, not Good for control them. of Fog of War right there. Blowing in the support right to stop. And getting rid of that Unbreakable Shield is a really big difference at the yeah. start of these fights. So Hauntzer threatens from the backside at the start of this fight, slows Arrow's approach, hits Meganar, flashes, gets to, and that ends up setting up the kill on the third while still burning the Kog'Maw's summoner spell. So, Patience there by Haunter pays off. Well, so hard to actually get on this team that I think about it. Biofrost is so fast. Double if jumps away. Bjergsen can jump away. They all reposition themselves on their on their own. And you have to pick and choose a target. Bjergsen repositioning now face to face with Zig. Haunter with the boomerang slow. Yeah. It looks like they have the last few shots. Nice Kaleo wall here. Haunter says, oh. I can hop that. That's not tall enough. It looks like Kyrian actually puts himself in the grave as well. A double kill for Hauntzer and Bjergsen as the team comes down. Now they have Mike Young in a real sore position. He gets grounded up, but it looks like he's got enough health to live for a little bit longer. Too many members of TSM means one more kill on the board. No choice at the end there for Mike Young but to try and run away with his ultimate. A big 2v2 win by TSM comes through in the bottom lane. Zick. Holds his flash that entire time instead of just fully disengaging, allowing TSM to kind of chase through and pick up a double kill. Still finding fights around that 0-5 to Leah is beneficial for TSM. Now they jump fair. Crazy stuff. TSM just taking control of this game right now. It's special the rest of the team. There's no give smite. A few love taps here as they get in. Zig calling in the cavalry as they rush forward. Special trying to get all the lockdown he can on different targets. And they do drop Sense Care, and that's beautiful for the Baron. But that's going to be Arrow going down. A Cathy and Surprise not Ooh. able to return too much damage here as Pyrian now stands tall by himself. They got Mike Young just on his heels. Yeah, Phoenix went out to sacrifice three people there to prevent the Baron from going yep. over. They did kill the Smite from TSM, so TSM's not going to start it right away. That's just choosing between bad and bad for Phoenix 1. They don't want to do this one. We're going to watch this fight one more time down bottom. Bjergsen cuts off Zig with the package. Zig does his best to run away, but right there, you expect a flash. Doesn't flash. He thinks he's going to be safe, but Hauntzer gets the double leap. And then Pyrian is just hit by a frozen Malinar. Mike Young was coming down to help out as well, but the team's so far behind, the rest of GSM chasing down. Just the entry into that fight for P1 as well. That's terrifying. They were all at least a thousand range from each other. If they were to get there, they probably would have continued to fall one by one. TSM is just causing chaos for P1 in this game. It's almost like they obviously have no choice but to continue to move like this. It's all reactive. As TSM moving very fast. That's a Baron. It's going to move even faster now here. TSM 22 minutes in, 13 to 6. Yep, 10,000 gold. They yeah. really broke this game wide open. Mountain Drake's going to be up in 15 seconds. That'll accelerate their turret killing. Uh, during this Baron buff, I think they're going to go and pull that one off. 
Uh, and then, I expect him to try and go for a swift win. The flash will be up on Svenskeren in about five seconds. Yeah. That can be their initiation tool, and they might win on this Baron if they play their cards right. Double lift. I was going to say, slowly walking down. Now, Bjergsen feels fine on the front line with his blue buff and missiles locked up. And that dragon is picked up to be three now to the side of TSM. Two Mountains Infernal Cloud is next here. And actually, yeah, we should have at least two more for the Rift Herald, depending on how fast they're taken. D1, we well, need to activate them immediately. <laughs> they're trying. That looked pretty but great. But they're down 10,000 gold. They probably shouldn't be out this far. Might get one out of Haunter. Oh! Okay. Flash out. Knew that was. It's going down, actually. They don't want to give anything up because there is a lot of gold to be grabbed in those outer turrets. Fast moves can be made with this amount of damage from Arrow and the rest of the team if they can get on a few. The problem is, TSM is always on a few more turrets first, and now they're on the inhibitors. Exactly. No flash alt on Haunter is going to help if you want up with this defensive. Holy, leader, but holy. It's double mountain drake, Trist Porky with Trinity Force. Those turrets go down very fast. Incredibly fast. Arrow with the four kills on the team. Two to Mike Young, so it could have power coming from him if there's protection, but it's not a shield comp. It's it's kind of a standard front shield comp. That makes it much harder to protect the AD carry or even your jungler. Mike Young goes down first. He's one of the tankiest. To the front line goes double lift, and then to the back as he says, King me. And it's gonna be a 15 to six score line. TSM starts on the inhibitors as minions push down the mid lane. Desperation fight there for Phoenix One. Can't burst through the Lulu shields. Uh -oh. still pushing. Hunter keeps himself alive. The Lulu shield comes through. A Cathian surprise. You're going to have to turn away from that. It definitely would have taken him down. But TSM has lost maybe a little bit more than they want. They're going slowly for the inhibs now. They're going to be back to rinse and repeat shortly. Yeah, two inhibs down. Still about a minute and a half left on Baron. Arden Sense with the on Lulu. That's going to power him up. I mean, Mike Young saw it was a 4v5. Figured he'd try. But they just don't have follow-up or damage. Pyrian can't get through the tanks, and neither can the Cosmos. So even if you flash for initiation on a carry, no one's going to be able to follow up. Uh, tough situation for Mike Young to be in. TSM then just kind of hits whatever's in front, does much more damage than P1 at this point, and take even more control of this game. Watch this one, though. Arrow, ooh, ooh 528. Oh! Lots of oohs, ahs, and oh my god, TSM is just not stopping this game. Pearson coming in for the double kill. One behind him with Hauntzer as they're looking to kill a special. His shield is the only thing keeping him alive right now. Because you see the HP drop extremely fast as the hits start coming in. TSM pretty much owns the base here at P1. <laughs> Hauntzer just missing there. Sun was in his eyes. As they go for a dig, he's going to put up a final fight here in front of the turrets as the team brings in the minions. I mean, just because Lulu normally empowers the Trist auto attack doesn't mean Arden Sensor Nar mini isn't scary. Just I'm looking to end. Scar running off, staying the long way home on this one. TSM looking to pad the KDA a little bit. Monster and Bjergsen on the front line. The Nexus is finally open, and they're allowing the Super Minions to focus on that. To see the back line getting a few shots from Monster and Biofrost. The team takes down the Nexus and TSM. Able to take down P1. Yeah, now one game win away from securing that playoff buy that they have been shooting for all split. They want number one, which would require them to also beat CLG or have Immortals lose, but that's the type of start that they want to have against Phoenix One. The match record's coming in four and 12 on Phoenix One, 12 and four on TSM. Yep. If you're TSM, you want the lopsided game that they just had. 27 minutes, clean win. Right, this isn't one of those, we're going all the way to three just cause, lose first, go to two. TSM needs to start early, and they pretty much did. Remember in the early part of this game, we had some yeah. extended plays on the bot side. 13-30 in, P1 with that extended stay. A three for one bot exchange that they had. We'll have that replay up on your screen in just a second. And this was looking pretty good for P1. Yeah, this is when the game was still close, and this was a TSM misstep right here. Biofrost shouldn't have been there. They should have conceded that turret because Phoenix One is faster on the play. Remember as well, the teleport's still up on Kled, and there's no way Gragas makes it down here. So 
They're opting into an off-numbered fight, and then Hanser thought he had ultimate flashes in, realized he doesn't have it, and kind of gives up his life. So maybe if that play doesn't even happen, they might be able to hold that play yep. uh, if they use the turret to their advantage. But instead, they end up giving up three kills and the turret uh, in that exchange, but it wasn't enough. We saw that extend. That goes over to the dragon fight, and then the game kind of continues for TSM. Turrets start to drop. They have yep. the Rift Herald to use top. That act equals another dragon fight. And then 19 minutes in, as this was actually still a pretty quick game, TSM team fight near the blue in the three for one. It still looked good for uh, P1. Yeah, this one was huge because uh, Phoenix 1 didn't have any vision control. So a special dies immediately, basically from Fog of War. And then just watch how Peering and Arrow can't get any damage out once the Kog'Maw W is off cooldown. This time, Hanser does have ultimate when he flashes. Yep. Look at how effective it can be. Gets two people stunned into the wall, and then they can just Trist reset the end of the fight. Hop away before the Kog'Maw blows up on him, and then TSM really took control of the game. And what a composition. I mean, Tyrion, or Tyrion, Pyrion took the Talia very early as you combine the two, and then TSM said he can take his, his comfortable champion. We'll take everything that can jump over that wall. You'll never yeah. corner us. The only thing that can make it over is Lulu, and then he probably makes it out in Whimsy anyways when the wall starts coming. So that just kind of threw the, the P1 engage off completely. Yeah, and the 9,000 damage from Talia <laughs> is unacceptable, right? right? So. We've seen Ryu being subbed in for Pyrian, even though he said he yeah, wanted to take a break that. because he's burned out. I wouldn't be too surprised if he's here, that he comes into the for game sure. uh, for game two because Pyrian had a pretty rough one. Yeah, we'll have to see. We are going to be taking a quick break, but when we return, it is going to be game two between TSM and Phoenix One. Don't go anywhere. You're watching North American LCS. Maybe the crowd is just uh, too lit today. Oh my god. Don't ever say that again. <laughs> Yerkson now with Sven Skarin in a bad spot as Hanser comes in. Nature's Grasp is coming in slow, but not quick enough for Pyrian. No, 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 as they rush forward, Special trying to get all the lockdown he can on different targets, and they do drop Sven Scaren. That's beautiful for the Baron, but that's going to be Arrow going down. Lots of oohs, ahs, and oh my god, TSM is just not stopping this game. Pearson coming in for the double kill, one behind it with Hanser.